Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of A A BJJ BJJ Marriage, Marriage, where we talk about our lives as a married jujitsu couple. BJJ Marriage with your host Nick and Brittany. <laughs> Hello. We realize we don't really say our names anymore, so sorry about that if you don't know us. Yeah, we just kind of start blabbing and uh, yeah, forget to introduce ourselves. To ourselves. Uh, but today we're talking with, it's uh, Nick and three Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> three <Yeah>. Nicks. Three <laughs> Can I say that? I was going to say three uh, spicks and a nick. <laughs> three spicks and a nick. I mean, we all we are them, so I think it can't, we're allowed, right? Yeah, you, the rules work. You can say it. I can't. So. <laughs> That's how it works. Being Chinese, I think you could get away with it, though. Yeah, maybe. Anyway, so I've been stuck with boys on oh this trip goodness. the entire time. Oh, it's been great. It's going I'm well. crying. I've been laughing so much. <laughs> we're great people. A no. lot of fun. No. No. <laughs> All right. Nope. So we have our friend Dave here. Hi. Dave is our purple belt at Fluid that we talk about frequently. He's been on how many episodes? Two? Three. Three. Two or three, yeah. At least at least two, yep. if not three. So he's Maybe been this is number two. I don't know. He's number one returning guest on the show. Probably. <laughs> Probably. But Tracy still gets all the ones with the most yeah. views. Thank you. Tracy still has the most views. <laughs> Am I gonna get stuck getting paid now? <laughs> when you, we start getting paid, you get we'll paid? talk to you about that. <laughs> uh, but then we have our other special guest, Brenton, who happens to be my dad, father-in-law, and all three of our professor at Fluid Jiu-Jitsu. Hey, hey. So, <laughs> well, yes. you didn't really have a choice, though. We're stuck in Vegas in right. the hotel room yeah. right now. <laughs> I'd, I'd just be sitting over there. <laughs> Probably interrupting. Right? Probably. So don't tell me what to do. I'm in the God. intro song. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we're coming oh, to yes. you from our hotel in Las Vegas. Oh, and yes. You probably are going to see more of the reflection yeah. of the light. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, take the light your way. That's probably it. <laughs> but we're on, the, we're on okay. the 40th floor, so we have a pretty decent view of the mountains behind us, but it is dark now, so you probably can't see them. <laughs> And well, pictures. the first night we were here, we got here late, and I didn't know that we could see mountains. I hate you so much. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's a great mountain view. Uh, she's trying to go for the color. What? As you can you see, grab your hand. We spent you know, too much time together. <laughs> All right. And okay. we make it to episode 40 and somebody gets hurt in the <laughs> do, hotel do, room do doing jujitsu. Do, do, do what? Are we done? No. No. <laughs> no, it's just fine. Okay. okay, we got... We've got nowhere. An hour so and four minutes. So, our purpose... <laughs> our yeah, purpose okay. of being in Las Vegas right now <laughs> is because we were at an IBJJF tournament. Yes. And it was the first time that these two have competed in one. International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation. Yes. The world's yes. masters, which means over 30. Yes. Which means and I it. couldn't compete. And Not like I would have on this one. That would have been t- very scary. <laughs> I wanted to compete, yeah. but I just didn't, uh, I didn't feel like it was my time. My nerves were through the roof. Yeah. <laughs> Work? Yeah. yeah. Until, like. Today. We'll get the, I'm sure we'll get the yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a big part of this episode is the nerves. Yes. Yeah. I tried to document it a little bit um, mm-hmm. so that I can go back, you know, a year from now and that stuff will all come up and be like, well, I remember that. Mm-hmm. It was crazy emotions. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, biggest competition that both of you guys have competed in. Is that right? Yeah. I just yeah. want to give a little bit of credit to, we did have two other Fluid members compete in this tournament as well. They did, unfortunately, already go back home, so they are not with us today, but they both competed and were probably feeling the same emotions that these two are about to talk about as well. Yeah. So, shout out to Jason Bergman <coughs> and Jose... Jose? Aguirre. Aguirre. Yeah. Yep. That, was, that was my Mexican. Jo- Jose? <laughs> hey, another Mexican. <laughs> Four spicks in a neck. Four spicks in a neck. 
And adjacent. <laughs> and adjacent. <laughs> uh, yeah. So that's funny. We should have yeah. just called it this week. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Right, man, so, uh, this tournament. <laughs> We've gotten all the wrong people listening. Yeah. Nick's in trouble now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this tournament had over 5,000 people mm-hmm. registered, which is pretty crazy. And it went. 63 in my division alone. Yes. And what was your division? 41 to 45 uh, black belt. You're Master 4, right? Master 3. Master 3. Yeah. Yep. And it was 181 pounds. So With the gi. Yeah, with the gi. So it was uh, very pigeonholed, and there were still 63 just in my division. Same age, yeah. same weight. Yep. And there's seven masters. So there's 30 to 34, 35 to 39, 40 to 40. Five, forty-four, somewhere in there. Every five years, um, all the way up to Master Seven. So, yeah, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, like sixty-five is the uh, wow. top eight. So. <laughs> Master Seven could still be out there. Right. What, what's he doing? <laughs> well, they had they had a couple of ladies that were in their seventies that were blue belts at mm-hmm. the last. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was awesome. Was that last year? I or think was it was last. Year? Year? It was last I thought it was probably two thousand nineteen. I thought that was Pan Am's though. I don't think I did it last year. Could be pants. I know. I have a picture of them on my phone. It was super inspiring. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I saw the video. Yeah. I get Nancy out there. Yes. Heck yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But yeah. Mocking them the whole time she's rolling with them. (laughs) (laughs) You could do that triangle better. Right. (laughs) (laughs) You think you're going to triangle me? Nancy is our 74 year old at Fluid who trains Jiu Jitsu. So if you have anyone in your life that. Doesn't train, and you do. Who says that they're too old? You're Tell them. Of Nancy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she's seventy four. Literally just started training jujitsu about four months ago. Yeah. yeah she's doing great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. She's fantastic. Yeah. But um. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Outside of this being the biggest competition for them, this is probably one of the biggest competitions that is held. Besides, like you know, ADCC trials and mm-hmm. ADCC or this is probably top one of the top three in the world. Yeah. 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 It's about as big as it gets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially in the gi. This is the big one in the gi. Yep. yep. Yeah, which is pretty crazy because you guys have really only ever done local tournaments, like throughout the Midwest area. Yeah. Was... I haven't competed in nine years, so <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I've never competed as a black belt. And the last time I competed as a brown belt, nine years ago, I uh, tore my meniscus and needed surgery about six months later. So <laughs> it was uh, this one. <laughs> it was definitely stepping out of my comfort zone and out of uh, what I what I'm used to to mm-hmm. uh, do something that hopefully inspired other people to do the same. Um, yeah, just put yourself out there. I was gonna ask you what inspired you to compete now after nine years. Um, well, it's nice that I get to I got to compete against my own age bracket. So it wasn't, you know, 25-year-olds who don't run out of energy that had been training since they were four. <laughs> yeah. And they've got 20 years of jiu-jitsu and they're still in, you know, 24-year-old shape. Um, when you get injured as a even a 30-year-old, you kind of heal pretty quick. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, you, you're not down for very long. You don't run out of energy like, uh, like you do when you're 35, 40. So it was... The lure of having my own age, <clears throat> and then um, I always set goals for myself. I always have something in the future to look forward to, to uh, kind of motivate me to go do something. Mm-hmm. And this was the next thing I I set my sights on that I wanted to go do. I wanted to compete again at, in jujitsu, and I had thought about it for years about competing, uh, and this just happened to be in one of my favorite places in Las Vegas. Uh, so I'm super excited to be back in the city because there's so much to do and it's mm-hmm. it's got great memories for me as well as, uh, you know, the the bright lights and all that. So I love Vegas and I, I was happy to, to come back here to, to compete. And, you know, I'm glad you guys came with me because I had some family here and Dave. <laughs> and then Dave. <laughs> no, I had some friends. I, mean, I had some friends. Everybody so. wants me with. Yeah. And, uh, for you. <laughs> yeah, and Dave, Dave and I went to train in Henzo's uh, along with you guys um, back in, in the summer. So I've <clears> been <throat> traveling a little bit with Dave um, and doing some jujitsu around. So that's been pretty cool. Mm-hmm. But 
as I said, like I set my, I set a goal in front of me, and then I I direct everything I do to get to that goal. Um, that's what I do with my races when I when I sign up for a half marathon or a triathlon or um, you know the Ironman that I did half Ironmans. All of that stuff is kind of where I go, and that's why I hadn't competed in jiu-jitsu because for the last eight that. years I've been doing three four. I did nine races two years ago in one summer. That's that's a lot of freaking races, yeah. man. Yeah. And it, it wasn't only the training time that it took to do those races, but then every weekend, you know, that's nine weekends out of the year, mm-hmm. out of 52, that mm-hmm. I was at a race. And that was racing, not even including your training time on the other yeah. weekends. So. Yeah. And I, I was training, you know, all the time. Plus, I was still doing jujitsu jitsu and, and keeping, you know, a uh, four-day-a-week training schedule with jiu-jitsu. So, uh, but I had a race. So, I was making sure that I was doing what I needed to do to, to do as well as I could in that race while balancing my love for jiu-jitsu and doing jiu-jitsu. And mm-hmm. then it's just kind of swung back. I did one race this year, and then uh, I wanted to compete. So this is where it fell. Yeah. Because you're trying to do one race in every single state, all yeah. 50 states of the U.S., so that's pretty cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I, I'm 21 in. Uh, I've done 21 states, and I've got uh, 20... Nine left mm-hmm. to go. Right? Yes, that's math. <laughs> Twenty-one plus nine, seventy. Seventy states. Four states left. Are you going to include Puerto Rico? No, no. And I, I'm also <laughs> thinking about uh, doing other countries like Mexico and possibly Brazil and some European countries and doing races over there. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I once I do that, then I might consider doing competitions, doing jiu-jitsu competitions in every state. Uh, or different countries and just traveling. And that yeah, is, that is one of my goals. Is I would like to hit every state. Yeah, every yeah. state. Every state. I'm going to in. That's nice. cool. That's a pretty good amount, though. Yeah, <laughs> it's not bad. It's, it's a fun. great start. Yeah. So, um, I also want to teach in in as many states as I can. So, if anybody <laughs> wants to have me in for a seminar, I'm looking to add different states to uh, to my uh, calendar, and you know. That I can say, well, I mm-hmm. taught a seminar in this state, and I'm four states into uh, teaching mm-hmm. seminars. And you would teach states. side control. I could teach whatever. Uh, I, I'm good. I'm good at a lot of things. Like, yeah, I, I'm especially yeah. humility. <laughs> I'm really good at that too. <laughs> no, it, I am. I am black belt level at just about everything except for possibly leg locks. Mm-hmm. Leg locks because my first five years of jujitsu, I didn't train leg locks. So I, I was behind the gun for a long time, and then I just recently, in the last five years, kind of picked up leg locks as kind of a, a useful tool for me. But um, yeah, before then, sense. they were kind of taboo, and we weren't really allowed to do them. So um, I, I'm okay at them, but I don't have tips and tricks and little things. And you know, I don't have 20 years of leg locks. I have five years of leg locks. Sure. So it's it's a lot different than. I was a wrestler. I have 20 years of jiu-jitsu side control and 11 years of wrestling side control. Like, I have 31 yeah. years of side control. Jeez. I can teach you a lot of stuff about <laughs> side control. So, And then guard, you know, I, I love playing the guard and butterfly and yeah. I've been developing my butterfly half. Uh, I've been doing really well at that. And I have a win over um, Eduardo Tellis, who is a turtle guy. Uh, he's um, uh-huh. he's got his own guard called Turtle Guard and um, an octopus guard an octopus guard and I um, am very proficient at that position of front headlock and bottom front headlock um, and being in that referee's position so I was able to shut down you know arguably the best guy in the world at that position because I'm pretty good at that position that's yeah. awesome so what inspired you, Dave, to sign up for the tournament? Uh, I've been wanting to go bigger with my tournaments. I've been in local tournaments, and getting up towards purple, it's been getting smaller and smaller for me to compete. My, mm-hmm. I end up with two, three people in my division. Yeah, much less your age. Yeah. How many were in your division here? 55. Yes. And that's... Masters won 30 to 35, mm. purple belt, 
181 pounds in the gi. 55, yeah. That's crazy. The yeah. way Jose liked to put it, because I think he had 37 in his bracket, and he's like, you know, even if I lose, I'm still top 37 in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're top 55 in the world. <laughs> and what you do, so yeah. that's pretty cool. I could have. I should have won my match. Yes. Yeah, I should have played so. the We'll talk side. about that in yep. a little bit, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this weekend did not go as planned because we learned the refs in IBJJF are just slightly different than what we're accustomed to in our local <sighs> tournaments. But any Frustrating th- calls. We'll let you continue <laughs> yeah. with what inspired you. You wanted to go bigger? Yeah, I wanted to go bigger. I wanted to have uh, bigger tournaments, more people, and just start taking it to a higher level on competition level and start going to the bigger tournaments and looking at uh, bigger tournaments more having you know I usually do pretty well in the smaller tournaments mm-hmm. now it's time to move up yeah step up challenge yourself yeah mm-hmm. that's awesome very cool so all right let's dive into it I guess <laughs> so let's start with Dave's matches. You went today, so it's nice and fresh. Yeah. But everything that happened. How do you feel about it? I'm not unhappy about my performance. I think I did a lot of what I set out to do. Mm-hmm. I learned a lot with needing to play the rule set because I think had I held some positions a little bit longer, despite the uh, the thing of potentially burning myself out, I would have won. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you had the advantage of going fourth out of all four competitors, so you got to see what the rule set was, whereas poor Jason had to yeah. go first, and he really took the grunt of it all. Yeah, he really we, did. We learned yeah. that if you stall for three seconds, you get a disadvantage, or no, a penalty, penalty point. Stalling. Yeah. Stalling penalty. Yep. So, but I'm not too happy with the way it ended. Obviously, because I lost 10 points. Yeah. And I think if I had held the choke and held the submission attempt and not let it go to try and move on for more points, they would have had to give me the ref's decision mm-hmm. for being on the attack and having it that yeah. advantage yeah. when we were tied. Yep. Yeah, because you were tied 6-6, six, six, each with one advantage point, And then... And with- I was sitting with a choke. Yeah, and yeah. then with, like, what, 37 seconds left, I think, you yeah. had to go back on your feet and start over. And I was going through shots and trying to work stand-up so that I didn't get the stalling penalty, mm-hmm. and I got thrown, and he got two points on me. And with that 20 was, seconds left, yep. And that was my loss. It was tough. Yeah. Yeah. And he had basically a mount, but the guy's arm was in for a bit. Yeah, his like arm was minute. stuck under my leg. So I think I should have gotten another advantage point on that. Probably. We all did. <laughs> but I yeah. wouldn't probably shouldn't have gotten the mount points according to the IBJJF rules. Yeah. But I should have gotten an ad- another advantage point on that. Yeah, for being and, in the position and attacking. And I, I don't know, I think I, there were some things I could have done a lot better to play the, to the rule set of it. Yeah. That's any competition, though, right? You yeah. always look back, and even if you win a match, you're like, I still could have done better there. You could like, have you done always better, learn. but yeah, this is, and this was a learning curve for this particular rule set, where mm-hmm. it is, I mean, they stuck a thing in my gi sleeve to make sure I had <laughs> enough, my gi wasn't too tight, mm-hmm. they were checking everything. Yeah, that was wild. <clears throat> so... So the rules were for the gi, they had to be at a certain length, you had to have a certain stitching, you couldn't have specific patches. You had to have a certain amount underneath of your wrist. lapel. Wow. They stuck a <clears throat> uh, a rod, wow. essentially, like a two inch rod up your to your elbow and it had to clear. Like if they couldn't fit that thing in, it wasn't a qualifying gi, you had yep. to change your yep. gi. It'd be too tight. And then they had a. Then they checked your, that your lapel was loose enough, like it wasn't like yeah, and not thick, not too thick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they checked for thickness, and then your patches That's have to be said. in certain places. <laughs> your patches have to be in certain places, otherwise you either have to take them off or wear a new gi. Uh, your your pants mm-hmm. had to be a certain <laughs> length. Uh, there were a lot of little rules on what uniforms you could wear. No yeah. rash guards under the no gi. Rash guards. No rash guards. 
Your little petals had to be the same color as your gi. You were yeah. only allowed white, blue, or it's 44 black. pages of rules, essentially, <laughs> yeah. for this, wow. this tournament. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. So lots of little regulations and things. But they dotted their, their I's and crossed their T's. And, um, you know, they have rules there because, obviously, yeah. they that's think that standard. helps. Yeah. 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 So. Just trying to standardize it. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. All right, what about your matches? Want to go into detail about them? Um, I mean, On a surface level, how, like, how do you feel about them? Well, my first match, it felt really good. Uh, I had an extremely good game plan, uh, just because Edward Tellis has so, Eduardo Tellis has so much material out there. He's yeah. so well known that, you know, you can watch his videos and go, okay, well, he's going to move here. He's going to do this. He's going to do this. It's like watching a football team do what they do. Mm-hmm. And then going, well, somebody has to be here because this is this is the route they run. So you need to be here, not here. Mm-hmm. And, and you just see the video and you're like, okay, okay, he's going to do that. So I had uh, one of our, our black belts at the school kind of simulate Eduardo's movements because he's been watching his videos off of BJJ Fanatics. Yeah. Um, so he simulated those movements and granted he's not Eduardo Tellez, but I shut him down just as easily as I shut down Tellus. Um, just because my style of jiu-jitsu is not movement-based. Right. So if you move, I don't follow you. I just kind of come right next to you. And then you don't move me. And that's that's what happens. I am here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Stone Meatball. <laughs> <laughs> they call me Stone Meatball. <laughs> so... Um, you know, he, he did, he yeah. did what, what is in his videos. He turned his back to me and he wanted me to grab and I did grab him so mm-hmm. that he would reach up. And when he reached up, then I reached underneath and I pulled him off because he took his base away. Mm-hmm. So I played because I knew what he would do. I knew when I put my hand on his hip, he would go for my hand with this side going here and try to hook. Well, now his whole base out. In front, the table legs go on. And I put him up, and then he base out, hooks. Mm-hmm. That's how I took his back. Because I knew that my hand being there, he'd go. And if I put my hand up, and I put my hand here, like this, like most people do, that he'd be able to hook my wrist, and I wouldn't be able to pull my wrist out, and he'd roll me over. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I knew the game. I knew what he was going to do. And like I said, I'm, I'm very good at that position. And I play that stuff without calling it turtle guard because I wrestled for so long. Mm-hmm. Like that's a, that's wrestling stuff. Like when you're on the bottom and you want to move someone, you grab the wrist, you grab their elbow, and you turn. So I knew he was going to do that, and I'm pretty good at combating that. We have Brett, big Brett, who does that stuff. Yeah, Joe. and hmm. Joe's never caught me in that. Yeah, <clears throat> he used to. I've but been Brett to once in a while, and and Brett <laughs> because he's so big, he's two fifty. Like, sometimes he'll actually flip me over, even though I have great base. But 180-pound guy, I don't, know <laughs> there's, I don't know if there's a guy in the world who's 180 pounds that can flip me like that. Because Brett still has a tough time, and he has to put all 250 pounds into moving me. Right. Because I just don't move. So I matched up extremely well with Talis, and And I had a great game plan. And I developed that. And I really didn't look at my second and third matches because I didn't want to get unfocused on who I had to beat. And I had a bunch right. of people message me and they're like, man, I, I saw who you were going against and I, I was really having my doubts. Like I was, and then when I won, you know, all those guys were like, yeah, man, I was, I didn't think you were going to pull it out. Nice job. Like, like that was great. And then I told, <laughs> I told a few people here in Vegas, like, like, yeah, I, I have a win over uh, Eduardo Tellis. And they're like, oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like they look at me different and it's, it's like, no, I, I belong here. I know how good I am. I, I, I'm not humble, <laughs> but I'm also not arrogant. But you deserve it. But you I'm know. not arrogant because right. I beat Eduardo Tellis. Mm-hmm. Like, That's some bragging rights right there. Right. Yeah. So so I'm not arrogant, but I'm also not humble, if that makes sense. It makes sense. Like I'm, I'm in between the two mm-hmm. because I know how good I am. And I didn't perform as well in the second round for various reasons. I didn't have a game plan first other than take down and get my points, which I executed yeah. perfectly. Mm-hmm. I, I, I took them down. I got my points. 
and I was trying to pass the guard, but I, I gassed out. And I thought I gassed out because I put too much energy into the first match. I uh, ended up winning 5-0, to zero, so I scored more points than I really needed to. However, um, we were talking about it and kind of reflecting on the match, and Brittany said, well, you hadn't been eating that much uh, because I lost... What's, what Six is it? Pounds. Six pounds in the last five days. Yeah. yeah. So I lost a bunch of weight and I cut some water weight, unfortunately. Yeah, he, we were in Vegas and he wasn't eating or drinking. Like Nick and I would leave the hotel to go get dinner and he would just sit around because he didn't even want to be tempted. So he just laid around and not, well, he didn't eat. And I was a pound under when I got on the scale. Um, Kind of close, though. So. so, yeah. But I didn't want to be over obviously because you get disqualified right away if you're over and for this tournament you can't weigh in the night before and then go eat and you know have you weigh in and then 10 minutes later you have your match so yeah it's not even like you can go in in the morning weigh in and then go to breakfast or something so i had to be on weight and dave was having the same issue you know today we've been kind of gorging ourselves (laughs) on food just because we haven't eaten very much but for me i think that lack of energy and that lack of nutrition that I didn't have for the week leading up to it. And I lost 27 pounds to, to compete mm-hmm. in this. Like that's yeah. how far I came down. And I lost 20 pounds pretty much just by eating better and eating healthy portion, and portion out. control. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But those last seven pounds, I stayed, I stayed like six, seven pounds over for three weeks. Mm-hmm. And I was five pounds over a week before. The worst. Yeah. And I'm like, man, I gotta, <laughs> makes it, I gotta just like not eat. That makes it really tough. I've done that for competitions before, and when I come up, those are the competitions where I have to call the most flat. Yeah. I come out the weakest, and tough for weight me, cuts. I dropped. I had to drop, do my cut for of about twenty pounds. Twenty for this competition. 30, yeah. Was, you did twenty. About 20. Wow, I didn't know it was that much either. Okay. Yeah, I, I get fat when I'm... <laughs> <laughs> We're already <laughs> fat. <laughs> Probably 190 now. <laughs> oh, yeah, guaranteed. But um, I, I, would, I hit the cut fast. I hit it fast and hard a couple yeah. of months beforehand. Right. So by the last, like, three weeks, I've been coasting at weight. Mm-hmm. Right. That's so good. you get that baseline of this is my weight, this is my diet, here's my training. Yeah, and I never had that because I cut six pounds in yeah in and seven days. That that's tough. I, I cut it in like the the last. Yeah. I think the last time I cut to one seventy, I would cut the last like three pounds, like within the, the last of. week. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I went and weighed in the day before, and I was still yeah dragging. A day's not that. enough to recover even, but mm-hmm. thirty minutes is just not enough. Yeah, so. Yeah, and, and I think that the lack of food and lack of nutrition uh, is what killed me. And I, I even walked off the mat after the Tellis match, which I performed very well and I didn't fatigue in that. But I walked off, forearms were burning, and mm-hmm. man, I just I just blew my wad out there. I know I did. Like, I'm, I'm tired, mm-hmm. and I, I shouldn't be. <clears throat> so I had a little bit of rest in between, came out for a second match. I shot well, got my tape down, ex- executed my... My game plan, like, take them down, get the two points, pass the guard. So I'm trying to pass the guard. Dude had probably the best guard I've ever gone against because I didn't even get close to passing his guard, really, until two minutes in. Yeah. His name and was Robert Johnson, for those who are wondering. He's from Mountain View, I think. That's his Mountain name. Tribe. Arizona, Mountain right? Tribe. That was the affiliation. Don't know where yeah. he actually trains. But. So, um, so, anyways, I got my takedown, trying to pass his guard. And I just, I just burnt out. I just got super fatigued where I was uh, having a hard time going anywhere with it. And uh, I had a couple opportunities that he was in a position that I'm really, really good at scoring points from. And because I was just too tired, I, I wasn't able to score the points. Mm-hmm. And uh, because I was so tired, he ended up capitalizing on me not following through completely. Took my back, ended up getting four points to take my back. Continued to try to choke me, uh, which gave him an advantage. He won four to two. Yeah. Um, he got all his points from his back take and tried to choke me for two and a half minutes. And uh, my only points came from my takedown. So I need to work on uh, my diet and get my weight closer. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
closer to the tournament and be you know two or three pounds away two or three weeks out mm -hmm. so that um, you know I can be two or three pounds under weight uh, coming out not such a drastic cut right so yeah. then the day before you can go out and have dinner yeah and the couple ready. days before yeah yeah you yeah. have your regular so, diet but I did a ton of running I, I, I ran a lot I swam a lot um, you know I, I did that sucks I did, <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't bad though it's the runs were actually kind of nice because it was a little colder out in wisconsin and it was um it was like a brisk run and i was doing i was doing 10 minute runs and then i was doing 20 minute rests and sure. then i do a 10 minute run and then i do a 20 minute rest so i was simulating what i thought was going to be 10 minutes which i found out like three weeks before <laughs> the tournament that it was actually five minute rounds not 10 minute rounds 10 minute rounds are for the adult world championships, which yeah. is under 30, well, all ages, but under 30 year old can compete in that. And I thought I was going for 10 minute rounds. So I had been training for like two months doing 10 minute swims, 10 minute rest and swim, 10 minute swim, 10 minute rest and swim. So I was building my endurance for 10 minute rounds. Yeah. And then three weeks before this tournament, I went to go see a friend of mine, Matt Moore, and Matt's like, no, I think it's five minutes. I was like, are you good? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah. So then I changed my my yeah. uh, training to five minutes, and it's just a different pace. But then I was doing five-minute runs and 10-minute breaks and five-minute runs and 10-minute breaks. And if I had been doing that, I might be, have been in a little bit better shape. But yeah. Well, it's all See, part of the learning curve for a new tournament set yep. and a new rule set. Nine years of rust had to be knocked off. <laughs> so, and I, I'm saying again, it, it the second one, I'm probably not going to win it all either because I'm going to have to knock some more rust off and get a little more experience under my belt. Uh, but you give me three or four of these, and I'm going to win this. I'm going further in the next one. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So what did you get out of this? What's your biggest takeaway? Um, my aggression <laughs> was better this time from everything. Mm -hmm. Agreed. My, I need to work on my takedowns. I need to get that first takedown. I was able to hit him hard coming off the block, and I could see it in his eyes where he had the moment of, when I first grabbed him, where he was like, oh, that's what's happening now. <laughs> I think it's the moment that you guys usually see in me where like, oh yeah, I'm fighting now. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, thankfully that hasn't happened the last couple times you've been out. There. Um, it's one of the biggest things I've been working on. Yeah. But I need to work on doing that, getting my takedown, and Dave would stress me out so bad <laughs> because he'd come from behind every match. He'd have four <laughs> matches in a day, and he'd be losing. Like all of them and two, just four, out. six points in the first three minutes. And I'm like, Dave, you need some points. <laughs> you did that again this time. Yeah. He was up on points the, and then out of that nowhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that Kill back me, man. take is what I, my back take. I'm am pretty good with loop chokes. I have some stuff I need to work on with finishing it now because he didn't take one of my usual baits and it's one thing that works yeah. pretty much every time. So have to I have to tweak it, it and yeah. change it to make it better so that they don't get to deny me. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get no to say no one else. <laughs> um, loop chokes are one of your specialties. It's one of yeah, your favorite moves to go for. I hit them from pretty much every position. I can hit a loop. Yeah. And I hit different variations on loops for... Different parts of the lapel, different grips mm -hmm. for yeah. any position I love that loops. I play. And but I was able to get to the back. Taking the back is one of the things I generally try to do from scoot around yeah. escape. Uh that worked out pretty well. I didn't trans do my back to triple threat and mount position mm -hmm. quite as well as I would have liked. And How many I, times have you watched this video of yours? I haven't watched it yet. I oh, watched, haven't watched it again? I, think I went through yet. once yeah. right afterwards. Okay. You need to watch it again. Jason just messaged me before we started this that he watched it again. He's like, it was two to one. <laughs> <laughs> You'll hear Jason screaming in the video. Oh, He's I not moving, Dave! He's not moving! 
happened? He really didn't move for like a yeah. minute yeah. and a half. It was he, very weird. He because he was just sitting there holding yeah. his lapel, so I couldn't cinch the yep. loop because yeah. it was. There. He was being smart though. Yeah, I mean, there he was, was. If he would have moved, he would have. If he would have moved, he would have had to tap. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was in the similar position when. Like, yeah. I had my back. Like, I couldn't really move. Mm-hmm. He, yeah. And he bade me to try and move my arm, switch the arm bar, because he was holding here, so I couldn't crank the arm for the yeah. to finish the loop. Mm-hmm. And he took it off to straighten it, so I'd take the arm bar, and I tried to pull it back, and he immediately mm-hmm. clamped it right back to his head. Yeah. So I, I say, couldn't cinch it in. We've yeah. got mm-hmm. some things we can work from there, though, for yeah. sure. And, I would say you were very evenly matched with your opponent. You guys were very... Yeah. Similar in your skill sets. And you obviously both had each other figured out if you lasted all six minutes and were tied for most of the round. Yeah. And then I think I should have probably actually made the transfer to the uh, bow and arrow. I didn't quite trust yeah. that movement shift. Yeah. You didn't want to let your leg go. I saw mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I probably should have made that full transfer because that's another loop variation that yeah. I use quite it often. Might have gotten your advantage even more for mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Yep. And uh but who knows what these are. Right. right. Yeah. Uh, we need to go for that neon belly too. Yeah. Well he did a very good job of defending it because he, as soon as I got to side control, he was up on his side facing me so I couldn't knock him over to mm. get my neon belly. Mm. Mm. Just gotta cross face harder. <laughs> Pow! Yeah. <laughs> right the kitchen. shoulder yeah. of justice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I need yeah. to work on the shoulder of justice to get to the neon belly. Mm. And work One some of my, my favorites. So, some of my stuff for that. I, I have suggestions for... Because yeah. I didn't see his arm in there. I thought you were mounted on him. That's why I was like, he where's got, the mount point? He had it just enough inside yeah. to not get it. You put your hand and put your hand on the ground and then slide your leg back like kick it back so he can't follow you i'm okay. put your arm here and then slide your leg back and he's not gonna be able to chase it and then just scoop it sounds like fun so, yeah <laughs> we'll, we'll go over i it. miss yeah. jujitsu yeah. i haven't rolled for days <laughs> <laughs> neither have i i only got one rolling yeah, yeah it's kind of crazy yeah our schedules are all whacked up <laughs> vegas yeah what day is it <laughs> <laughs> what time is it Wait. Right. Yeah, I, I I always actually think about well, do I have time after you guys leave <laughs> to go to train go, somewhere to go train in the morning on Monday <laughs> before your tattoo? Right. Oh yeah. So, what would you guys say was your biggest hurdle getting ready for the competition? Nerves. Yeah. I just mm-hmm. I started freaking out just at the sheer size and scope of this competition. Especially when you showed up and you're just. Uh, yeah. Massive. And I walked in there that first day and I was watching black belts and brown belts compete. And I was going, I'm going to die. I'm probably going to die today. Tomorrow. Not today. Yeah, tomorrow. Well, the first day after the competition was over, Dave is like huddled in a corner and he looked like he was ready to cry. And I'm like, are you okay? What do you need? And he's like, I have to keep telling myself. I'm not going against the black belt. I'm not going against the black belt. And I was like, oh, no, you're not. You're going against the purple belt. You'll be fine. <laughs> uh-huh. But that, I was walked in and I was watching all the black belts, all the brown belts go and watching what they were doing. I'm just like, I'm fucked. <laughs> <laughs> I am screwed. There's a lot of shit going on here. And then he watched Jason get screwed over. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was disheartening. Yeah. Yeah. So what happened with Jason is... Uh, there was, um, Jason got his... Start throwing stuff right now. <laughs> First, yeah, so there was two problems mainly in Jason's matches. The first problem was he took him down and passed his guard, but since he was too far out of bounds, and I say air quotes, because his, maybe his foot was off the mat. That's like uh, as far I as think, out of bounds. Yeah. I think the guy's back was off the mat. Yeah. Everything else was on. Like okay. his butt, his hips, his legs were all on the mat. Jason went to the side, mm-hmm. and his... Lower half was still on the mat. Yeah. But Jason went to the side to the outside. Yeah. So I would understand close. not calling the, the guard pass. Mm-hmm. I would get that because he came out of bounds. Because in wrestling, if you if he would have went out of bounds like that, you know, okay, you might not have gotten the... Well, take down points yeah. or whatever. Well, you would get the takedown because you got the takedown. But, like, 
they wouldn't start you inside control, mm. like set you up, yeah. pinning them. Yeah. So, uh, kind of like the takedown that uh, uh, what's his face got? Um, what's his name? Just had Is it. No, no, no. Okay. The Cody. Uh, Co- what? Shoot! What's the guy's name who just oh. fought? Who are you talking about? Who never got taken in the UFC? Usman. Never, Usman. Oh. And, uh, who just took him down? Not Corey. Colby Covington. Colby. That's. I was trying to think of Colby. Yeah, Colby took Usman down. You can say whatever you want to about that. <laughs> that is a takedown. That is a hundred percent. That was a takedown in any wrestling venue event. That's a takedown. Yeah, I heard another argument is you can't knee a downed opponent. So yeah, is he up I or down? I, I <laughs> He's <just> down. <laughs> So, um, anyways, <laughs> anyways, okay. So, so Jason took him down. Should have gotten takedown points. Yes. Went around the guard. Yeah, past the and, guard, and went to out of bounds for that. and yep. Got no points for it. Yeah, the ref called it. He was like, "Okay, back to the middle." He, he did stood he them get up. An advantage. Did he get an advantage? He got an advantage, right? got and an that's advantage all advantage I got. For that. Yeah, that's all I got for that work. Yeah. And it was like what? And then so Jason ended up taking him down again, and then. Um, <clears throat> What had happened was Jason stood up out of his guard and then backed up for like a half step. He just said he wanted to recenter. So he wasn't even like backing up. He was just trying to recenter himself. Right. It was like one and a half steps back. Yeah. To like lower in and start to attack the legs in front of him. And the ref called him for stalling just because yeah. he was like moving backwards or something away from the guard. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah. So that was the first penalty. So now Jason's up by two points and an advantage and a penalty. Yeah. And then. Um, the guy put Jason in close guard and then Jason, yeah. And then Jason was just trying to fat, uh, fight against the guard and ref called him for stalling. Ref called Jason who was in the guard (laughs) being held down by the guy in the guard for stalling. Yes. Twice. And then that gave the guy two points. Gave the guy two points because of the third stalling call Mm -hmm. and it was tie. Yeah, it was 2-2, nope. two, two, but uh, the guy did have two really good submission attempts against Jason. And then he got his So that's two his two advantages. advantages. So he won 2-2, two, two, two advantage to one advantage. Yes. All yeah. on penalties. Yep. Yeah, which was For ridiculous. stalling. Mm-hmm. Which were ridiculous. When the other stalling. guy was stalling. Yep. Yeah. And that takedown was a takedown. Yes. So Jason should have won 4 to nothing. Yep. But... He was robbed. He was robbed. I've never seen a worse rob job than that. <laughs> a rob job. Rob job. It was a rob job. Then Dave uh, got robbed. Yeah. And we had a Brazilian black belt who was uh, sitting, sitting next, to, next us. to us who was arguing for us. Did you see for that? Mount points. No. There was a there was a Brazilian guy a couple was, seats away. He was helping he us called in the Portuguese. ref. He's he's like he's called the ref over and he's like you know, you should have gotten those mud points. You should have gotten those takedown. Like, you should have given him all these points. And the rest, like, well, you didn't have this and you didn't have this. He's just like, no, that those are points, man. Like, I understand a little bit of Portuguese, not much, but, <laughs> but I could tell. Like, he's like, yeah. no, this is this is what it is. He was here. He was there. He did this. He did that. And the rest, like, he didn't, and he's defending his decisions. But the Portuguese uh, or the Brazilian was arguing probably for thirty seconds. Yeah, and he just oh, wow. laid into the ref. And he was speaking Portuguese to him, and obviously it doesn't change anything because the ref's yep. decision was yeah. the decision. But he you were knew it. For. He knew it. Yeah. And I knew it, and I couldn't yes. vocalize it because the the referees all there they, they don't, I don't speak, speak English. English. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah. So he advocated um, for you because he knew you won that match too. I think yeah, and if, yeah. I think one of the big things was learning to play the rule set. Like yeah. I, if I had held on to. Some, the choke and how but even stuff. but I feel like you did play the rule set enough to win that match. It was yeah. just a referee not giving you what you should have been awarded. I, yeah. You did play the rules enough. You, you when you watch it, you score it. Don't don't look at the score. You score it in like what you know the rule set is. I guarantee you, you won that match. Just like Jason, yeah. you, you won the match. You didn't win it as handily as Jason, but you won the mm-hmm. match. And the, yeah. the Brazilian who was next to us knew you won the match. Yeah, I knew you won the match. Even getting thrown, yeah, yeah, which should have never happened. You should have never been in that position to be thrown. But yeah. even with that throw, you still should have been up. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm, uh, <laughs> he had a Spanish last name too, so you know. Yeah, and it, that was yeah. 
That's part of the politics. The politics. I've been playing politics. the rule set. You gotta know who you have to be. Yeah. Right. But did they take extra time scoring points for me? And um, not uh, that noticed. Prob- not too noticeable, but probably. Oh, no. I have not actually second. watched my matches yet. Okay. I've watched neither one. I've purposely not watched them. Yeah, it brings so, up a lot of emotion watching those matches yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Maybe we don't watch them together. Watch them. <laughs> <laughs> Help each other. Oh, I dislocated that. my finger again. Oh yeah. In my second. What were you gonna say? I need to rewatch them again and watch them with somebody so that we can like take notes and be like, okay, here's what you did. Here's what yeah. needs to happen. Yes. Get ready for next that. time, and that's you know, like I'm yeah. already on to. Okay, okay, now I need to start getting ready for the next one, mm-hmm. and I need to, and it's I need to get ready for the next big one, and I'm gonna ha- probably have a small one in between. Pan Am's in Orlando. What? What? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna say? I don't know. Your finger dislocated with a minute and a half left in your second yeah. match. Well, I was trying to defend him from choking me, and I think I jammed it. When I was up. I mm-hmm. taped That's my fine. fingers together, dislocated my finger. It was like this. <laughs> and popped it back in like two weeks before yeah. the tournament. Um, <laughs> I was really concerned that I wasn't going to be able to choke. I never got the opportunity to choke, anyways. Well, a little bit, like, but um, yeah. But my finger. I mean, I don't have the. <laughs> that's yeah. that, that's, that's funny. That's weird, right? It looks yeah. very weird. <laughs> <laughs> This is a new fluid symbol. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, then you can do it. I can do this. <laughs> and that's it. Like, like it. How do I? How do I do this? I think I, I got it. I can't even bring this finger up. <laughs> Everybody, do All this right. at home. <laughs> fluid groove. It's it weird. It do. It's super weird. Uh, this took a really bad turn. How much time we got left? <laughs> so, what's your biggest uh, takeaway? Um. I think I have two two huge takeaways. Number one is uh, my nutrition and and being closer yeah. to weight. You know, being underweight. You should get you one of these. Weeks out. <laughs> right. He taught me for the yeah. most part. He's the one who taught me how to cook. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah but the problem is, is when you're cooking for yourself. Yeah, you just eat and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, I so what happened was like I lost 20, 20 pounds. With just cutting my portions, and I, st- I didn't stop eating much of what I, I cut out soda completely. Uh, I cut out a few other things, but nothing like I still ate mostly what I ate, and I lost twenty pounds. Yeah. But then I stalled at one hundred eighty five pounds, which I needed to be one seventy eight and a half. So I stalled there for like three weeks, even though I was eating that same portion and i was a personal trainer so i know my body just kind of adapted to that and it's like oh you're not gonna feed me fine <laughs> screw you i'm not gonna lose weight anymore <laughs> this is where i'm gonna stop now forever yeah so i knew that um and i knew i would have to cut it down and i did but even when i cut it down i still i stayed at like 184 185 for like two and a half weeks and then i lost That's a rough. couple pounds and I was like, oh, shoot, I'm a week out, and I'm still mm-hmm. like five pounds over. So I'm like, I don't really want to starve myself, but so I'm gonna get myself almost on weight, like within a couple pounds of of where I need to be, uh-huh. and then have a month of this is my diet, this is my training, this is my muscle, this is my cardio, this is everything I'm gonna do in the tournament, rather than hey, I've been training at 185 pounds, now I'm 178 pounds. Because 178 plus my gi was 180.5. 180.5 is what I yeah. weighed in at. I could have been 181.5. Yeah. 181.6. 181.6. They have it. They have Kilograms. Yeah. <laughs> so um, nutrition was probably the the key. And that's just knocking off the nine-year rust of not remembering, you know, and not wanting to cut. I don't want to mm-hmm. cut. And I, I said the whole time, I don't want to cut. I want to get to this weight. And I was getting there really well, actually. I was yeah. coming off twenty pounds in two months, you know, yeah. with without like drastic dieting. And then, um, you know, I, I want to be there. I want to be closer. That's that's my biggest takeaway. I think with one of the biggest things that helped me 
was I had somebody. You had a nutritionist. My, yeah, yeah, I had a nutritionist. Yeah. And I mean, despite, I mean, I'm pretty good at cooking. I'm probably not quite as good as Brittany or you. But I'm pretty good. Way better than me. <laughs> <laughs> Soy chicken. <laughs> Inside joke. But I had somebody be like, okay, here's what you're going to eat. You can season it how you want. You can cook it how you want, but here's what you're going to eat. Yeah. And she went through, shout out Michelle Monterey, Fighter Fitness. And she went through. You have her name on your crux? And. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, he doesn't. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> Why do you have Michelle's name on your crux? <laughs> <laughs> but totally Michelle if you will sponsor me <laughs> we'll put you on our sandals but she went through and she's Work like okay sale. here's what weight you're gonna be yeah here's what you need to eat for the next three months yeah to get to your weight you're gonna have enough nutrition you're gonna have energy mm-hmm. and when I was down there faster than that she was like okay add this in mm-hmm. and I had and I trained at that level yeah with for that weeks. for I was probably on weight for about a month. How was your stamina today? Did you feel good. fine? Yeah. yeah, you weren't huffing and puffing or anything, and you had a six minute match. Six minutes is a long time. See, and that's where I need to be. For a month, yeah. I need to be at the weight so mm-hmm. that I'm not cutting weight the last week and trying to change what I've done. I didn't even roll at this new weight. Yeah, it was 178 pounds. I never, I haven't rolled at this in nine years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so like, yeah. yeah, get somebody to make your diet. Else to make your diet I can plan do for it. it. Well, you I just can't. Don't. You can, I but it helps. It's better if you have somebody else. Yeah, yeah. accountability, it's, buddy. Yeah, which yeah. I do for a job. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out my Odyssey. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, biggest takeaway was nutrition for you. Yeah. And working on your stand up for you. Working on my stand up and yeah, making getting my top, getting my points and not getting rolled. Yeah. Hmm. I do want to talk about Jose's match, too, because we talked yeah. about Jason's. We talked about your guys, too. So we also had our friend Jose, who was on... Josie! Yeah. Episode, I think, <laughs> 36. He's our friend. Uh, Josie. <laughs> something like that. 38, 36, something. What? He was on episode 30-something. Oh, something. oh yeah, yeah. Okay. But, <laughs> no, we talked about yeah, how <laughs> he lives in Seattle right now, but he's from Mexico, and his wife lives in Milwaukee. And he she's trains awesome. all over Shout the place. Susie. Yeah, she yes. started training jujitsu, so yeah. we're gonna get her to be a beast. I'm really excited about it. It's be great. More females for me, but uh, stop. <laughs> can we not make this a thing? No, well, this is a thing. If you're not watching, you're just <laughs> listening. I apologize, but you have no idea what's going on. But so also be thankful that you have to no make idea a what's going fist, on. like a like a, a knuckle, a fist, fist, but you're. Ring finger won't go down. But your ring finger <laughs> is like an inch from your palm. So touch your your pinky, your middle finger, and your index finger to your okay. this palm. Is too much screen time. Yeah. For real. Okay. <laughs> but your other finger, because I can't do it right now. Here, give me a hand. Yo, <laughs> don't. <laughs> okay, Josie. So Jose. Josie. Jose. Is Jose. Mad. So, Jose. it was Jose's first time competing in 2021. He had never competed as oh, really? a white belt. Yeah. He just yeah. started competing as a blue belt. Oh, oh, oh. Like, not this competition. That's why I was like, this is his first tournament this But year? he wanted to do IBJJF, and then you yes. had told him, you should probably do some local tournaments before you just yeah. jump yeah. into that. So, we had the few people from Fluid say they were doing this tournament. And Jose was like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> but but yeah. he has never competed before. <laughs> so, we are like... Whoa! We should do some other tournaments. So let's, <laughs> let's help you out with you this. Just understand what you're getting into. Yeah, that's, <laughs> like that's a big <laughs> other angle. <laughs> yeah. So then he <laughs> prepared <laughs> by. It's not, it's not like white people. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that part out. All right. So <laughs> we can edit that. Is it? Nick, edit that. <laughs> So he prepared by doing some local competitions, <laughs> but he did some in Milwaukee and Seattle, so that was pretty cool that he got to train in a couple different places. He did one in Seattle, yeah, and he won a, a match there. Yeah, that was an in-house, yeah, like a exhibition tournament. Okay, yeah, but that's okay. Yeah. He won a match. He he got the experience of it. He did a couple other tournaments. Uh, he did not do great in those, but it got his feet wet um, and just. I mean, I don't want to compare it to me because I've already competed, but 
after nine years of not competing, like you almost forget. Sure. Yeah. It just so if you've never done it, you don't have anything to forget. You just don't know. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it's a completely different skill. Like you can be really, really good at jujitsu, but suck in competition. Yeah. Or you could be really good in competition and not be that good at jujitsu, just yeah. because you know how to compete. Like yeah. if you know the rule set and you can stall, you can <laughs> win a match. Yeah. yeah. Like literally, if you know how to compete, that's a skill all unto itself. Sure. Yeah, my, and you have to do it to learn the skill. My wrestling coach used to tell me you should never lose a match in under a minute because you can run away and stall for a minute. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. If you yeah. know the rules, you can play the rules. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's the football teams do that all the time. They yeah. run the clock out. You play yeah. the rules. Mm-hmm. Run the clock out. Watch that's the true. other team's calls. And yep. they get in trouble for it, but everybody does it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so yeah, Jose had never... <laughs> we keep going off in tangents, and we're like, I kind of want to go eat soon. So. Now you're hungry? I am a little bit. Yes! yes. Okay. <laughs> we got our hungry. We're hungry, did it! <laughs> so, Jose. <laughs> yeah, go. We got his feet wet in local tournaments. I'm going to... <laughs> you're going to be kicked off of this very soon. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but yeah, Jose, he he has changed phenomenally from a grappler from yes. when he first signed up for this tournament to actually showing up to this tournament. Yeah. He has completely outdone himself, yeah, in yeah. what he used to be. Yes. He held his own today against a yes. very tough blue belt, yeah, uh, in this tournament. And yeah, had he not done those previous tournaments mm-hmm. um, and came out like he did in the first tournament that he ever did, mm-hmm. he would have gotten steamrolled. Like, yeah, yeah, just for sure. Because he got steamrolled in the first couple tournaments that he did. Yep. Because he didn't know what to expect. Right. Uh, I forgot who had said it, but somebody, one of the Gracies had said, it's like a kick in the face when somebody tries to go 100% at you for the first time in your life. Mm. Yeah. Yep. It's shocking. Yeah. It's like, whoa, this guy wants <laughs> to kill me. <laughs> like, this is not my training partner. Yeah. Yes. There was somebody yeah, at our gym when we were doing competition roles, this practice, that was like, I'm going to compete. And you went to do a competition role with me and it's like no i'm not <laughs> yeah, yeah once, yes. once you have someone go 100 percent, it's it's a different ball game yeah yep. yeah yeah and you can't simulate it the right way in the gym no no it's you can get close to... but it's not yeah. the same because they're your friends they don't want to actually hurt you right like people in this competition they, they, don't they want to kill you yeah, they because don't they don't they don't have any connection to you. They don't need to train with you. They don't have to see your face the next day. They don't have to deal with you. Yeah. So right. if they break you, if you pass out, if you die. They'll go break about it. Yeah. <laughs> My guy was from Costa Rica. What does he care about me? Right. Right. Exactly. He's going to Costa Rica, you may find him. Yeah, let's go find him and beat him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure you'd beat me. So did Jose he scored? Did he score any points? Or was he down? He was just down on points. Before down he got the guy passed his guard three times, so it was nine, nine to zero. Nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what happened. Yeah, he kept putting him back in guard, and that's again playing the rules. He wasn't adept enough in the rule set to know that hey, if I get this guard, if I get my guard back, he's gonna pass my guard and get points. Mm-hmm. Like, no. don't get your guard back yeah, so that he can just pass you. I've learned that lesson before. Yeah, yep. and it's a lesson you have to go through and be like, oh. Okay. <laughs> you, don't do that. you can yeah. be told these things a thousand times, right. but yeah. you have to go through it. You right. have to. That's what I was telling the guy in the hot tub. Yeah. Like, yeah. For my Iron Man, you can't, you can't tell someone what to expect on an Iron Man until they actually go through it and they go, oh, this is what he meant. This sucks. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. This yeah. is terrible. Why did I do this again? <laughs> Yeah. Basically, you so, have to say that for sixteen hours. I do have a question because you typically compete in almost all the local tournaments that are around, and then this was your first big scale one. What was the biggest difference? Because he hasn't competed in nine years. We didn't do this one, so you're the only one that can really compare the two. Like, what made it, what made this one so much different besides the scale of it for you? Um, I think the name. Okay. There's, there's a certain. Gravitas to the name IBJJF that they have, yeah. That they've the made, they've made prestige with it and worlds. Mm-hmm. This is a world title. Mm-hmm. Like I said, my guy is from Costa Rica. Yeah. My guy was guys, from Brazil. Yeah, we have people from 
met people from Canada, from Mexico, yep. mm-hmm. all over the world. Miami, like coming Arizona, Alaska. Alaska. But okay. not at the tournament, but <laughs> competing, people from all over the world are coming to True. compete. This. These are top people in the world. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody puts up the best guy in the gym and they say, okay, okay you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's yeah. kind of funny and to think. That. And then you go there and you see, oh, these are all the best people in all of their gyms. Yeah. Yeah. That's these a pretty are, intimidating thought. Yeah, that's. And I, I, I know I have decent jujitsu and I'm a competitor, but man, seeing that coming up, mm-hmm. going. I had plenty of times where I was like, why did I do this again? Yeah. And Lots then, of doubt. It's unnerving, for yeah. sure. Preparing for competition no, was it. different. Yeah. And this one was different. This one was, it was a whole nother level for me. Like, mm-hmm. I always have a little bit. And like I explained it, it's like a little bounce. And as I'm coming up, my nerves are starting to get there. Mm-hmm. I was a wreck. We, yeah, I we, remember. We yeah. <laughs> I was it's been a, a rough couple days, but for it us. teaches you so much about who you actually are. Yeah, so like the journey to it. Not not even the tournament as much as the tournament teaches you. That mm-hmm. journey to it teaches you so much. Yeah, mm-hmm. or even when you're under the pressure in the match, that teaches you about you also. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite things about competing in general. Mm-hmm. And it was actually kind of it was noticeable because I separated from the group. Last night before they were going out, I ate something literally because I had to. Because I knew I had to. I wasn't hungry because my nerves were mm. so shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you and knew I, you wanted the energy. Yeah. Nutrition. <laughs> yep, nutrition. <laughs> yeah. And so mm. and I went back to my room. And all of a sudden, everything started coming to a razor focus on today yeah and i it's went here. to bed and i woke up in the morning and it was entirely different it was i'm ready yeah i'm very focused today yeah. it, it was, was good. good i love the picture that i got of you waiting in line with mm-hmm. your your dagger fire eyes and you're just like Let's fucking get some <laughs> <laughs> yeah and i was i was ready to go and yeah. i am very pleased with what i did you today won that match Yep. I'm not happy with the turnout and what how it ended. Yeah. But I am pleased with how I did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, you got the next one to yep. prove that you Pan went to the next. In the stomach. <laughs> Hash house, go, go. <laughs> so I have a question for you. Yeah. What was it like to see your dad compete? The My nerves were shot, too. <laughs> right. It was pretty ridiculous. So I I don't compete very much. I've only done it twice, but I know my nerves when I'm getting ready for a competition are also through the roof. But especially when he's competing and we're getting him ready for his competition, I'm also still very nervous and very sick the day of. So then, of course, my dad is like, I'm going to compete for the first time in nine years after I tore my meniscus last time. And I'm just like, oh, my God. <laughs> 40 and 12 now. Yeah. Huh? Nice. Cool. But it was super cool. Honestly, like, we were reflecting on our day the, I think it was yesterday. You competed yesterday, right? Maybe. Yes. I don't know what yeah. day it is. You're right. I don't know Vegas. where I am. Vegas. <laughs> but we were reflecting on our day. <laughs> and we, we had both minutes. agreed, right? We both Five. agreed that seeing his hand raised, especially next to Eduardo Tellis, was one of the coolest things that I have probably ever seen. Yeah. Just yeah, because. It was, a, it was great. I mean, if you He was on the cover of Jiu-Jitsu Magazine in 2016. He has his own guard. Like, what the heck? When I got my black belt, he was on the cover of Jiu-Jitsu Magazine. Yeah. So to see, I mean, not like you're no one, but you don't have a cover on Jiu-Jitsu. You don't have a BJJ Fanatics video yet. So, like, (laughs) to see you be able to beat someone like that, it was seriously so cool i think i screamed so loud in the video so if you watched that video sorry i'm well, probably I think most like people who roll with me understand why i can beat someone like that yeah. yeah i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna show that i'm a world champion for sure mm-hmm. those of you who know me know that i do what i say i'm gonna do mm-hmm. yeah yeah just wait until we're both competing you get double the nerves <laughs> it's gonna be great 
April, <laughs> all three of us. <laughs> April and Orlando. And Jada. Brittany's like, I'm not traveling without another woman <laughs> right, again. She's going to watch it live. <laughs> it's like, Didn't you say, you're like, you're going to do Pan Ams too? I'm like, oh my God. Blue belt. Almost. You said you can. <laughs> Come to our ceremony November 20 you, you can do it at White Belt. 22nd, maybe? November? At 26 years old? Yeah, Pan Ams, yeah. Oh, yeah, that's all ages. We'll see. <laughs> she's like, are those 10-minute rounds? Are there 10-minute yeah. rounds? I'm not Why doing not for Blue Belt? I'm not doing 10-minute rounds. She's <laughs> looking for excuses. Okay, let's move it's on. like, nope. <laughs> Ten minutes Don't worry, we'll convince her. My style a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh... Me too. I have two gold medals. I'm retiring from... I know he didn't know. Nogi. So, um, what was your guys' favorite thing about the the trip so far? Dave. Favorite thing? Seeing it come into focus today. Mm-hmm. That was awesome. Going from the nerves yesterday where I was a wreck to this morning where I was ready to go. That was kind of cool to see in myself. Yeah. Yeah. It and, proves. And, yeah. And now food. Food and drinks. <laughs> food. Party time. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, it proves to you that when it counts, you're going to show up and you're going to be yeah. focused and make it happen. Yep. I do have to say one more thing that didn't get brought up because they're guys, they don't care. But I saw so many female black belts oh, yeah. on the first day there. It was ridiculously inspiring to make me have that drive to want to keep going so mm-hmm. that maybe one day I'll be doing IBJJF as a black belt female. Cause that's pretty freaking cool. But I, She's still going to be undefeated in no gi. I've really only met like two female black belts ever. And it was at Master's Hours with... Uh, Courtney Deepa. Yep. Those are the only two I've ever met. And so like being in a room where there was a hundred, I felt very overwhelmed. And I was like, holy crap. It, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was cool to see the talent there. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw Andre Galvao. We saw Sanjay Ribeiro. We saw Cyborg. Yeah. Um, Cyborg is an animal. Yeah, he's Holy massive. He's like, he looks big on Instagram, and then you see him in real life, you're like, <laughs> it hurts to live. Yeah. <laughs> he's a big boy. Yeah. There are a lot of big guys there, too. Like, thick, thick mm-hmm. guys. People. Yeah, you like them. Big <laughs> the people that scare me the most enough. are when their necks are bigger than their heads. That's when I know, like, oh, <laughs> that's going to be tough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but uh, what's your favorite part of the weekend? The food, being able to eat again. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's cause, huge. Because I've had portion for so long, and yeah. then I haven't eaten anything for a week, which I just, I don't want to do. It's a bad decision. Yeah, it was a horrible decision. Mm-hmm. Um, however, I had to do it to get to weight, because yeah. I wasn't dropping those last five. So I, I'll i be down a month before, so that'll yep. be my Lessons diet. for next time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but getting to eat yesterday. It was great. And today, um, you know. Vegas food. Mm. Best food. Yeah. Do you want to have <laughs> What was your yeah. favorite part? My favorite part? Um, I get to have energy drink whenever I want. It's totally normal. <laughs> <laughs> no. My favorite part was really just being here with the team and supporting and just seeing everybody um, put their best out there. For sure. I just love supporting the team and helping everybody out. So. Cool. It's just awesome to be out here. I said being around with the black folks. Oh, yeah. Okay. I think that was just yeah. the feeling of that was very cool. Nice. Very unique. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Very cool. Well, I think that's all for our episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thanks for listening to the first months. episode of Three Speaks and Nick. <laughs> what did you say? Huh? What? This is the first so, episode. Yeah. <laughs> episode Wayne of Three Speaks and Nick. <laughs> oh. Mm. <laughs> Apple Sushi. One. Oh. Okay, we'll see you guys later. Uh, like, subscribe. Yes. Give, us a, give us a good rating. Jose Anderson. Thumb down. Jose!